So from this great story of an up-and-coming startup, we're going to continue the trip uh, along to somebody who founded something, also another up-and-coming ecosystem in Poland, um, and who founded a, a ride-sharing platform in the local market, who then sold his company to BlaBlaCar, and then basically is the head of Central and Eastern Europe, um, and who will uh, come soon on stage. I don't really see where he is, but I'm sure that he's... Ah, Piotr is right here. So let's welcome Piotr on stage. And he's talking to you about how you can expand the business starting in, in, in Central or Eastern Europe and how you can expand it to hopefully eventually make it go global. So, so uh, I would like to share a story of, uh, of a journey of uh, uh, Blah Blah Car through 12 countries. We are in the roots uh, European company and actually we are um, a lot of people in Europe think of like expanding to the US and see this as a golden grail of their success. Uh, we went a bit different path and um, I think that might be interesting for uh, people here to see how from the business point of view we expanded to uh, all the 12 European countries we operate in, starting from a very local uh, marketplace in uh, France because that's where the company was founded. Uh, I joined it a bit later uh, in 2012 when my company was acquired by Blablacar uh, to uh, go to the next level in Poland and then later in the uh, next country. So, um, but first uh, I will try to say a bit about what Blablacar is uh, and sort of question how many of you know already about Blablacar. Uh, in general, about the brand. Not that many, so so out of a few words, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, so let's imagine that today we have a driver who goes from Cluj to Bucharest, and uh, probably cost of fuel, cost of motoring, uh, for him would be about 60 lei. Uh, I hope that I made the calculations right. Uh, but we have pretty similar prices in Poland, so I think that I did it right. It's like 500 kilometers or 450, uh, and this should be more or less like this, even more, but let's take this amount for calculation. And on the other, on the, on the other side, let's uh, try to imagine what's the value of empty seats in a, in a car that travels on this route. Uh, I think that the best way to estimate that would be to check the travel website and to see uh, what's the cost of uh, empty seat in trade. So uh, I also did some check and I think that uh, this seat in trade may cost you between 30 to 50 lei. Uh, so uh, if you sum up all the empty seats, let's see, let's assume that there are, there are three empty seats in the car. And then you'll see that the value is quite significant. And um, what we did in Blabla Car is we just created a marketplace of those empty seats. So we did a marketplace that connects drivers who drive uh, on some particular route with passengers going the same way, enabling them to connect and building kind of an alternative transport network. Uh, but when we started, so it was how it is now. And, but when we started, a lot of people were, hey guys, you're just building a hitchhiking website and it's probably not really the best business idea. And, uh, well, they probably uh, imagine this kind of uh, people doing hitchhiking and then it's not even a uh, good business idea, but it's also probably poor experience. And if you sum up this with probably <laughs> this kind of thing that you think when you try to uh, imagine people hitchhiking, and actually this is kind of a question that we got asked uh, in all the countries at the beginning when we asked. Uh, so safety is kind of a parameter that uh, worries most of the people. So when you sum up all those, this, all those um, uh, pictures, then you need to find a solution. And oh, that was the beginning. Find a solution that solved all those uh, problems and challenges that uh, I pictured in prior slides. So uh, to solve those problems, uh, we tried to create a um, travel website that is seamless to, to use. And it provides just a simple way of uh, finding a trip uh, like you did on your other website, like train website. Uh, you were able to book a seat. So you are able to book a seat, which makes this much more, much more reliable. You can plan a trip. You 
because you can find a trip that departs on a particular hour and in most of the countries we operate we have tens of trips on a particular hour on a particular axis so like from Cluj to Bucharest it's not yet in Romania but maybe soon uh, so uh, that's how we try to think at first and uh, so find a solution uh, another very important factor that we built in the product is uh, ability to do peer-to-peer -peer reviews. So whenever you make a travel between Lucian Bucharest again, then you were able to rate your driver or passenger, and each of these ratings uh, brings uh, with itself a long story, a long personal experience, which is not like only rating a transaction, it's just rating a three-hour stock, if it happens, because sometimes it does not happen. But it at least uh, allows you to rate, uh, for example, driving style of a driver, uh, which you can do anonymously. So all those uh, features uh, are built in the product uh, were our solution, which uh, finally enabled us to uh, grow quite fast uh, starting in 2009. We are able to reach more than 7 million users uh, this year. But well, that's how it looks now. We solved the problem. We created a solution of the product, the product that solved the problem. But um, we still were a very local marketplace back in 2009. Uh, local in terms of uh, the fact that most of people travel domestically, so people do not travel across borders. Most of people in Lavac are traveling within the country. And local because we were still in France. And well, France you can see considered as one of the biggest countries in Europe, but it's still only France. 60, 70 million people uh, that you could travel because some people travel uh, between surrounding countries anyway, within like Belgium, France. So uh, then we started to ask, ask them ourselves a question and try to find an answer for that. What were the successful EU companies and what were their strategies to expand uh, in Europe? And actually, this is something that uh, not a lot of people realize, but uh, expanding in Europe is one of the toughest task you can uh, imagine in, when you build a startup because it's like a market of a uh, number of languages, uh, borders, and uh, people with uh, say different mentality and so on and so on. So uh, probably not that many US companies in their Europe and scaling country by country and also not that many European companies that did it in Europe. So we tried to look at those companies and try to find which were the single country winners and uh, what they did, and actually most of those single country winners were the companies that grew enough big uh, to start to monetize, to start to be a successful company within the country, but then they struggled because uh, meantime there were a lot of companies mushrooming all around the Europe copying their uh, strategy, so that it was pretty light to, uh, to expand uh, for them. And there were also some companies that were able to become multi-country winners and very small number of them that were global winners. So we started to look at what they did, and actually there was one thing that um, was uh, very visible uh, for most of those cases. Uh, they started to build their footprint very fast. So like in, in case of Blablacar, we were founded a bit before 2009, but in 2009 we hired the first employee. Before that it was just only founders, and it was like footprint of, the, of only France, our business model was still unproven and uh, there was a seed round uh, race. Then we uh, started to expand to Spain. Uh, still the business model was really not proven. Uh, we raised uh, another round of uh, money that helped us to scale further. And um, we, we, we scaled to uh, US, UK. And uh, it significantly um, increased our footprint. And we started to this year to make some tests with uh, business model and generate some customer to customer revenue. Before that, we did some uh, B2B platforms that helped us there. And uh, then it's really accelerated. We expanded to Betalax, Poland, Portugal, Italy, uh, those two uh, last countries we, we did um, acquisitions. Uh, and then last year uh, we expanded to Germany, Russia, and Ukraine. So as you, as you can see, in uh, four years, we uh, our potential, uh, our footprint, 
uh, increased from 65 million to 550 million, which is quite significant when you compare with the potential of uh, US companies expanding only in US. So um, now I'll try to share uh, what was uh, what were the most important uh, factors of, uh, of uh, how we did it and some uh, recipes uh, that I may share. Uh, so, well, that's quite obvious, but before doing anything uh, on particular market, you need to analyze it, and we, uh, we have some uh, uh, cookbook of uh, uh, how to check the potential of the market, what's the fuel price in this case, uh, how, it, uh, how much fuel you can buy for your daily wage, and so on, what's the cost of transportation, what's the quality of roads, so on and so on, and yeah, that's what you that's what you do. Uh, but I think that uh, really analyzes you. You do it, and that doesn't bring you any further. Uh, just helps you to make a decision. But then the most important thing that I think we do uh, is to find a local team. So we will never launch a country without finding a local team because a lot of people think that it's just translating the website, and and that makes it makes it work. Right? It's a marketplace and. Uh, you will just not make it without a local team. So uh, we have like three options uh, that we usually try to uh, check. One of them is actually hire, which means that sometimes we acquire a company that has a uh, user base in a country, but that doesn't happen that often. Um, it happened in some countries like Russia, Poland, Italy. But sometimes it's just a team who is very good at what they do but they still haven't been able to uh, generate an interaction or they even do a slightly different stuff but they are good and, uh, and they are happy to join a team and, and work in a company that scales globally. Uh, another team is a spin-off. We, we have a quite uh, multilingual, multinational uh, company in, uh, and also in headquarters so sometimes people just uh, decide to relocate and launch a country uh, and, and, and start operations. And one other thing is just hire local people. Uh, but all of these options are equal, but without finding a local team, it would be impossible to grow that fast that we did. So what we actually did in those four years, we were able to uh, create seven local teams, and, um, and it really helped us to uh, grow fast. Uh, a lot of people ask themselves questions and also ask, question, okay guys, but you, you have a very complicated structure, you are still a small company, but you have seven local teams, that's, that's very complicated from legal point of view, that's very complicated from uh, operational point of view, and yeah, I agree, I think that uh, that's, that's quite hard, but what we try to do is to create a culture of startup in a startup. So those local teams are very, very autonomous, and uh, they, they, they operate in an autonomous fashion, uh, in the company, we still have 20 uh, previous entrepreneurs. Well, I don't call me a previous entrepreneur. Actually, I was an entrepreneur from 16 years. I'm 35. And that's the first time I officially worked for someone else. Before that, I've never done it. But I don't feel like I'm a former entrepreneur. I'm still, uh, I'm still doing stuff that entrepreneurs do. Uh, so the key word that I would say helped us to grow and it helps still us to grow and uh, when I talk with people in uh, new, new countries that we want to expand, that's something that, uh, that I really uh, uh, say them, that you need autonomy, which, which is uh, a favor but it's also a responsibility. Uh, so when you run this uh, company with seven offices and um, a lot of people actually working remotely from the headquarters. What you need to have is a strong brand. Otherwise, you, you may end up with a dismantled company, a company that operates on diff different bases in all the countries and which will not provide a, a experience, the same experience in all countries, which is quite vital for us. So we started not really good because we started with a French name, which is called Cohotwash, which I can't even spell because I don't speak so good French. And probably a lot of people in countries where we expanded would have also struggled. Well, maybe in Romania it wouldn't be that big problem. So that's why we found that, uh, that we need a global brand. And we actually founded this global brand, which is called Blah Blah Car. But hmm, this skill seemed for some people it's a quite crazy name. They asked us question, well, were you guys drunk when you found this brand? <laughs> and uh, well, it wasn't like that. And uh, the brand is very 
much linked with uh, product experience and with uh, our uh, user experience. Uh, and so, just to tell you a short story, uh, when you create a profile in uh, BlaBlaCar, so to become a user, then you need to define a number of uh, factors, like if you want to drive, drive with uh, uh, animals, if you smoke in a car, if you like to listen to music, and one of them is cognitive index. And this cognitive index is uh, scaled from blah, which means that you probably are not a person who likes to talk a lot, to blah, blah, and then to blah, 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 which means that you can tell the story of your life after one hour of uh, driving with someone else. So, uh, so that's the brand, how it's created, and it's uh, uh, probably uh, recognized in all the countries, quite easily spelled, and that's why we, we use it. And it's uh, becoming a very, very popular brand when you check uh, um, Google Trends for some well-known brands of global companies. You will see that BlaBlaCar is really trending uh, uh, very fast. Uh, so all of these actually combined uh, um, help us to grow uh, very fast. Um, and I will show you how launching new countries actually affected and shifted the uh, focus of our company from being a local player to become a European and beyond player. So that's the growth rate of a company in France. So it means each month uh, it shows how much in which month uh, the user base uh, growth. It doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's a scale of growth in total. Uh, it's just changing by season. And then uh, when we launched the next country, which was Spain, you can see that at the beginning we still weren't really growing fast, but it kicked off last year very, very fast. And then you sum up another country, uh, which we uh, which we launched another, 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 and you end up with really a uh, huge uh, part of uh, our growth being generated outside France. And it's uh, the gap is growing even faster because we launch new countries, we, we uh, accelerate growth. So uh, that's uh, how uh, your global footprint can help you to grow and uh, help you to maintain growth because that's the thing that you need to keep in mind, especially when you try to do this kind of uh, um, business that we do. So thanks. I hope I was on time. It's actually been in time, so we actually have like one minute twenty left. But since we're also separating, oh, okay. Normally we wouldn't have taken questions. If somebody's raising their arm. Let's get one question because I'm pretty sure that everybody's looking forward to have lunch. Hello. Um, with technology today, uh, you've got a lot of challenges. Uh, so why do you still ongoing only for long distance uh, matching rather than so trying to solve the traffic problem inside cities? I mean, for example, if you go to Bucharest in Romania or even here in Cluj, you see a lot of people that are driving alone. So I think a solution like yours would definitely work in a city if friends would work together and go together to office and so on. Well, it's a very good question and actually um, that's not like that we block this opportunity. Uh, our transport network is kind of self-organizing, but when you imagine um, critical mass uh, that you need to make things happen on short distance uh, from both sides, demand and offers, I mean drivers and passengers, you'll see that you need much more critical mass than we already have. So uh, I don't mean that we don't want to do that, but it will happen in something in certain future. Uh, let's consider a driver that departs from this stadium to the center of Cluj right now, even though here we have a big concentration of people, and this driver leaves here like in 20 minutes and uh, then find him a passenger who wants to travel at this certain 20 minutes uh, and uh, to the similar location that he wants to drive to. It does, it's not so easy when you match people who travel between cities when their flexibility on time and departure place is much bigger. So let's say that you travel from Cluj to Bucharest, you can depart 30 minutes later before you can uh, drive with take a tram and travel to the pickup point. While with uh, short distance travel, you need very specific conditions to happen at once to make it to, 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 to make it working. So it's not so easy. Actually, there are companies that solve uh, this problem and it's like, uh, it's called taxis. <laughs> and uh, then it's working on, uh, on a different basis. It's working on demand basis. Here in the case of BlaBlaCar, we have in-demand basis. So there is a, a, a demand of traveling from uh, 
Bucharest to um, Cluj, and uh, there is also offer that goes on the same way. In the case of taxis, you have uh, demand, and then offer is proposed by a certain driver who wants money for that. In our case, drivers, uh, by the way, does not earn. Uh, they cannot generate profit, it's just for uh, a return of uh, costs. So we build a platform that you cannot earn on um, ride sharing. Uh, you can only share costs of, of your motoring costs of your, of your travel. So that's the answer to your question. But, but I feel that if it, I, I wish we can solve the problem. Actually, in Poland, I was working on a platform that was uh, built uh, a bit different model of growth. So uh, it was built to provide companies with a solution that help their employees to travel from their home to park offices. Uh, and that's something that you can build that doesn't require that much critical mass. However, it will not be so, uh, I think, a uh, huge success uh, long term as uh, doing that how we do in Blablacar. Uh, because uh, we did it mo mostly because we bootstrapped, so we uh, wanted to have revenue from uh, as soon as possible. While here uh, we can wait a bit to generate revenue because uh, we can uh, earlier we can first uh, uh, gain a critical mass and then try to monetize. Thank you very Thank you much, much. Professor. Thanks.